If you were to take a look at this Chromebook in front of me, or even look at the title of this video or the name of this Chromebook, you'd be forgiven for maybe not exactly understanding the difference between this and the one that came before it. Well, the Spin 714, this device here, is very, very similar to the Spin 714 that came out the year prior, but there are a couple notable differences that we're gonna talk through in this video. But regardless of the similarity to last year's model, this thing is an excellent, excellent Chromebook to use, and I've really, really enjoyed my time with it. So let's talk about it. Today's video is brought to you by the CapCut Online Video Editor, a platform that makes it extremely easy to edit videos on your Chromebook. We've been using this web-based editor around the office here at Chrome Unboxed for a little while at this point, and we've been extremely impressed by it. With simple hardware requirements and no real need for a download, it's a PWA that leverages the power of the cloud after all, CapCut's Online Video Editor is a breeze to use for all sorts of video and graphic content creation from short form videos to multi-layered projects. Using the included AI tools and templates available, you can be up and running on a new video idea quickly with all the tools you need to create any sort of video that you can imagine. I know that for us, using the auto captions feature to automatically add text to our videos has been a massive time saver that we've really loved using. Being a web-based PWA, it stays updated automatically and features like free cloud storage and real-time team collaboration make this a powerful tool for all creators individuals and large teams alike. If this all sounds good to you and you'd like to make some awesome video content on your Chromebook with the CapCut online video editor, just click the link in the description and you can start creating today. So let's just talk about the outside bits of this Chromebook. Um, the main difference here, and this is a small difference, is that we've gone from a navy color to this gray color. And it's the same kind of gray that Acer has used on quite a few of their Chromebooks over the years. But it's a really good looking color. It doesn't pick up a ton of fingerprints. And generally speaking, the outside of this Chromebook feels really good. Like the lines match up. There's nothing sharp or, or weird around the edges. And there's even like you only pick up on it like this light's really bringing it out. The hinges and even the Acer logo up here, almost like a goldish color. I don't, I don't know if that's totally picking up. I'm trying to see maybe on that top camera a little bit, but overall they didn't change the chassis. Like it literally is the exact same size, same weight and everything from the 714 last year. And I know a lot of people bagged on the 714 because they liked the 713 that was around for the years prior where it had the taller three by two screen but they've kind of stuck with this form factor. And like I said last year, I kind of like it. I like the compact feel of this device. I like picking it up and holding it. It just feels really nice. Uh, there's no uh, bending or creaking to the chassis whenever you go to pick it up. It's not wildly thick. It's not crazy thin, but you know, ultimately, it, it feels good, it fits in a bag really easily, and it gives you enough room to get all the stuff you need to get done, fits in a lot of good ports and all that kind of stuff. But overall, metal top, uh, metal keyboard surround, and it's an alloy, I think, of some sort on the bottom, but all of it comes together and gives you this really nice firm uh, form factor here. You do have some fan ports along the bottom, and then a few just along the back here, but it, it doesn't really look bad and again it doesn't feel bad like when you go to pick it up and hold it the thing feels really nice so while we're out here let's talk about these ports usb type c over here full size hdmi slot headphone microphone on the other side another usb type c usb type a and then your volume rocker here and it's worth noting that both usb type c ports are thunderbolt 4 so that's a really nice uh, upgrade to go along with the internals, we'll talk about those here in a second because it's one of the main upgrades here in the new 714. But on the outside, again, you would be forgiven if you weren't paying attention to the color. You can be forgiven for not really noticing the difference here. And part of me wants to go, well, you know, they really should just, you know, change the chassis and do something new every every single year. But for a line like the 713, 714 line, I think it's okay for them to slowly iterate and just kind of change and tweak and make sure that everything fits together really nicely. And for a Chromebook like this that starts at $699, that's really important. Like it needs to feel good. It needs to feel considered. And by sticking with the same chassis for a few years, 
it's kind of like making a car. It gives Acer the ability, and any other manufacturer for that matter, uh, the ability to continually iterate and make their devices just a little bit better each year, a little bit more refined. And, and this thing definitely feels like a product of, of that sort of work. And, and I, I really do appreciate the build quality and the way that this thing feels in the hand. So let's crack this thing open real quick and talk about some of the bits on the inside. Because once again, those are largely the same here. Um, you know, this, this device is um, still a 14 inch screen. It's still uh, 1080p plus, so it's 16 by 10. So when you look at the, the actual screen ratio here, it's a little bit taller, again, just like last year's. It's not the full three by two height, but it's 16 by 10, which gives you this nice, larger feeling screen than what you normally would get on a 16 by nine, 14 inch device. But it's 1080p-ish, 1920 by 1200 instead of 1080. But the bezel along the bottom is nice and small. The bezels along the, the sides and the top are nice and small. And so again, it just has this premium look to it. The, the screen actually gets up to around 340, 350 nits. So in most lighting environments, it's plenty bright. Not the brightest thing we've ever seen, but it is plenty bright. It's never given me any problems in coffee shops or working in the car or anything kind of like that. It is a great screen. And then above that screen, you get a, a, a kind of a unique addition here in a quad HD webcam. So uh, not 1080p, it's not 4K, but it kind of somewhat in between there. So you're getting a few extra pixels. You have Acer's kind of adaptive uh, camera software going on here. So they've, they've got a temporal uh, noise reduction going on. So, you know, when you're in lower lighting, it tries to get rid of some of that grain, but the webcam looks really good. It adjusts for uh, lighting pretty nicely. And then it's got the uh, cover up top here too. So it allows you to just cut off the camera if you need to, if you're in a meeting, and you want to make sure that nobody's looking at you. You can just flip that privacy shade there. I love that addition, but overall up here at the top, great colors on the screen great brightness, great viewing experience, small bezels. So this thing just looks really nice sitting on the desk, uh, really nice and modern. Again, just like the one did last year, but you know, a slightly different colorway. And uh, yeah, it really pulls off a nice look. As we move down the screen just a little bit, um, you've got the upward facing speakers here, which are largely the same as last year's model, which is to say they're fine. Um, they're not amazing. Um, we've had a few devices here lately that have had surprisingly good audio. Uh, this isn't necessarily one of those. It just, it sounds pretty good. And, you know, I've watched some videos and stuff on it. It's not something you're going to want to sit and watch movies or anything like that with, but you get some decent separation and you never have to worry about blocking it as you set it on your legs or anything like that. And then beneath that is a fantastic keyboard. It's one of my favorites, just like last year's uh, 714, one of my favorite Acer made keyboards. Uh, I've typed a lot of articles on this. I really do enjoy it. It's backlit. Uh, the, the travel's really nice. It's got uh, a considerable amount of travel, but a nice kind of like softer click to the keys and they're nice and quiet as well. So uh, it kind of passes, you know, all the things you want from uh, your keyboard in a Chromebook. And then right below that, as expected, is the Gorilla Glass trackpad. And I didn't mention this, but you have Gorilla Glass up here as well on the screen. And both of those are antimicrobial. Uh, which is kind of nice, kill some of those extra germs uh, on the two places where you touch the Chromebook just about the most. But it is a Gorilla Glass trackpad down here. Super duper smooth, really responsive, nice click mechanism. Like I really like everything uh, about the trackpad on this. So we've talked about a lot of this in other videos, but when you combine a great screen with a great keyboard and a great trackpad, you're like halfway there to making a fantastic Chromebook experience. Now it can fall apart when a device is all wobbly or it can fall apart if, you know, the hinge is loose or, you know, the internals are super slow, but you know, that's none of those are the case on this particular device. Uh, we haven't talked about the hinge really. It's a 360 device and that's not wildly unique these days. Uh, but I don't think I ever tried a one finger lift. It's got Oh, it does. Look at that. It does have a one finger lift. I didn't even try that until just now. Um, and yeah, it pulls that off pretty nicely. So to weight a hinge that has the convertible form factor that you can do that right there with, uh, it's pretty cool uh, whenever you can kind of get both of those things in one device. So I do love having um, the tablet modes. Really, I like more of this kind of presentation mode or like a tent mode, you know, where you kind of do this number with it. Um, I like those modes a little bit better um, than than just straight up tablet mode. But, you know, ultimately speaking, it, it, it's nice to have the convertible hinge there when it doesn't get in the way. Sometimes convertible hinges are loose and they don't feel great. And so 
now you have a compromised clamshell and not a great tablet experience. I like this where every once in a while, if I want to use it in, you know, in tablet mode or, or, you know, presentation mode, I can, but it doesn't hinder what it feels like to use this as a claim shell Chromebook. So now let's talk about the stuff inside, like under the hood here. That is where, well, really only one of the main upgrades happened with this device. So inside it's got a 13th gen Intel Core i5. Uh, the last one had a 12th gen and the 13th gen uh, Intel Core series didn't really change a lot. So you're talking about the same nanometer processes and all that stuff from the 12th gen. It's just clock speeds are a little bit faster. So this Chromebook's a little bit faster. For some of you, that's not a huge deal. Some of you love the fastest possible thing. This is one of the fastest Chromebooks you can buy right now. And I'm not even gonna go into benchmarks because right now with the, the higher end Intel chips, Benchmarks almost like we're losing, uh, you know, what what makes those important because it, everything's gotten so fast. You know, we have this huge spectrum of scores on benchmarks that it's like, yep, that's fast, but yeah, that's fast too, and well, that's also fast. This is going to be faster than most other Chromebooks. I don't know that you're going to notice it that much more, uh, but it's if you like speed and you like to know, hey, I want to be future proof for a while. This thing will do that. It's a Core i5, so you got Intel Xe graphics. That means. When Borealis finally comes out of you know the beta testing, if you want to get into some uh, gaming you know locally on this device, it'll handle that stuff better than most. Uh, it's still paired up with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage, which is really nice. It's nice to have that kind of stuff. Uh, plenty of storage on the inside, um, you know, and you don't really need to feel like you got to expand it or anything like that. So. You know, this is gonna be a fast Chromebook, but what's really striking is Acer lists this as a 10 hour battery. Um, I don't know if Joe's gonna be able to show this, but we you know we've had it on. I've not been doing much with it uh, since we've been sitting here, um, but you actually, I can blow that up. Let's do that. Um, boom, there you go. Handy trick if you didn't know it. Control shift and plus changes your resolution. Uh, you can do it real quick. Uh, we've got a video or uh, a post about that somewhere. But uh, if you look down here, 100% still battery. And again, I've not been doing anything on it. It's just been kind of sitting here. Um, but it's showing uh, 21 hours. That's not realistic. Um, but I also didn't, uh, I didn't do anything to like manufacture that number. It, this thing has gotten really good battery life pretty much the entire time I've used it. Now granted, I use it at a desk a lot, but when I've taken it out with me, I've never had to really worry about it. So I would say that 10 hour battery life, if you keep your screen brightness in check, 100% is realistic. You may even get a little bit more than that. So I've been super impressed with the, uh, with the battery life on this one so far. All right, so a couple of last things I wanna mention before we kind of wrap things up here. One, you might've noticed I didn't mention anything about a stowable stylus. Well, it's because they didn't include it this time around. Now they brought the, price down the base price down to 699 from 729 from last year so maybe that kind of makes that okay it is usi 2.0 compatible so that all that stuff works grab any usi pin it's going to work but um it doesn't have the one stowed inside of it so if you're really after that you might try to find a deal on the, the older 714 uh but yeah it, it does not have that this time around but i did want to show you uh a little bit instead of just saying it's fast or showing you benchmark numbers which are kind of boring i wanted to kind of show this to you uh, so that you can see exactly how fast this is now i've got um a bunch of stuff open here so i've got multiple videos just running uh real time uh that you can kind of see and they're all they're all working i've got some websites open that have that have uh, ads going all that kind of stuff and then we've got multiple uh desks i've got oh look there's joe um, I've got the camera running. I've got a or a calculator. I've got some websites open here. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on. And, and as you can see, like just you know, flicking things around, everything's nice and smooth, uh, no problems here. Um, and so I'm really tasking. If nothing else, I'm tasking the RAM for sure. Uh, if it had 16 gigs of RAM, maybe it wouldn't even even think about any of that stuff. But Ultimately, it's fast. Uh, I'm having a hard time left-handed kind of this way, but I, want, I wanted to show you guys this stuff. Uh, the thing just moves around super duper fast. And with what I told you about the internals here, that shouldn't come as any surprise whatsoever. But the last thing that I want to do is, I have one video that, yeah, I had this one queued up, is to actually put the speakers on our microphone. And I know that's not the best uh, possible version of you hearing this, but at least you know, like, you know what my voice sounds like, right? You know what it sounds like. And, and so if the Chromebook can create something similar to that, then that's usually a good indication that it's got enough like low end, like 
I don't have like a Barry White voice or anything, but it's got enough low end to kind of you know carry itself. Uh, so I want to let you listen to what the speakers actually sound like here. Let me get it kind of more up under the... Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see it here in the office. Let's dive in the box. All right, so as I'm getting... You know, they sound okay. Um, again, it's not like, hey, you're going to sit and listen or watch you know, like full-length movies on this or anything. But if you know, you're consuming some general content, some general YouTube stuff, spoken word sounds good. And they're going to sound good for your video calls as well. So, And it's just, again, nice that they're not going to get muffled by sitting on your lap or sitting on a desk or anything like that. It's a nice look. And overall, just kind of goes with the aesthetic here. Like, Acer put together a great package once again with the 714. And... It's easy to recommend. It's been on sale a few times. It's probably going to be on sale while you're watching this video. Uh, go to chromeunbox.com and check our deals section and look. But like I know as we're filming this right now, it's 130 bucks off. So it's in that $500 price range pretty regularly since it came out. And at that price range, it's just it's so easy to recommend a device that is this well put together and considered and just flat out fun to use. Like I just I really enjoy this Chromebook. And it's one of those kind of like the 516 GE from Acer that at the end of the day, if I'm not reviewing something, this is one of those ones I'll probably reach down and grab and put back in my bag because I just like the way it feels. I like the way it performs. I don't really have to think about it ever. It's, I don't have to think like, oh man, the screen's too dim to do that. Or I don't love typing on that. Or, oh man, it's not going to be fast enough for this. Like it does all those things. Oh, I need to grab it for a video call. Great. It's got a great webcam on it. Like it just does all the stuff you want a Chromebook to do really well. It feels good while doing it and just kind of gives you that confidence of a, a great form factor, great build quality all put together for what's turning out to be some really decent prices over and over again as it goes on sale. So yeah, highly recommend this one. And that's it for this one. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there and hit that subscribe button and be sure to ring the notification bell too if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.